Today I'm going to show you how to use our business rules component called WebRule in an MVC web application. First, we need to check if WebRules assembly is referenced in the projects. To do that, open the References folder and look for the CodeEffects.Rule reference. You can download the assembly from rule.codeeffects.com if it's not there or if it's broken. Next, we need to tell WebRule which class we are going to use as our source object. The source object is the class that represents your data that will be evaluated against your business rules. Sometimes it's also called a fax object or just fax. Again, the link to the detailed documentation on source objects is in the description of this video. In this demo project, we use a class called patient, which declares a number of public properties and methods. Unless you tell it not to, WebRule can use most of these properties and methods as rule fields, in rule methods, or rule actions. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on the property's first name, last name, and the method called full name. I'll show these fields in action in the next video that demonstrates the rule editor inside of the browser. The patient class also declares the output property of string type, which is decorated with the exclude from evaluation attribute because we don't want this field to be visible in the rule editor. We are going to use it to hold the result of our rule actions, which I'll demonstrate later. We can also use any public static or instance method that returns void as a rule action. For example, the method register is a public instance parameterless method that returns void, which qualifies it to be used as a rule action. Action methods don't need to be parameterless. They can also take any number of value typed parameters, including collections and arrays. For example, there is an overload of the register method that takes a string as a parameter and can also be used as a rule action. Note that WebRule can use multiple overloads of the same method as different actions as long as those overloads are named uniquely. Let's get back to the full name method for a second. As you can see, the full name method simply concatenates the first and last names and returns the formatted full name. WebRule can use this method as an in-rule method. The method attribute sets its user-friendly display name and description to be used in the rule editor instead of the declared name of this method, which is the default name in the UI. Enroll methods can also have multiple overloads. Actions and enroll methods don't need to be declared in your source object. You can use the external action and external method attributes to tell WebRule that you would like to use actions and methods declared in other classes in your rules. For example, our patient class uses two such methods as an action and enroll method. It is likely that you'd want to customize your properties that are used as rule fields. You can do that by using the field attribute. Our demo project uses this attribute to customize both the first name and last name properties. It sets the UI display names and descriptions for both properties as well as some other important values. Links to the method, action, and field attributes can be found in the description of this video. Now that we have our source object, we need to add WebRule to the view. There are three calls that you need to make in order to successfully add WebRule to the view. First, you need to tell WebRule which CSS theme it should use or that no theme is needed. Next, you need to clear the editor in your HTML by setting its server ID. You also need to set the save, delete, and load actions if your editor uses the toolbar. Set the rule model which contains all the info about your source object and which we will initialize in our controller. The rest of the settings in this call are optional. Finally, you need to render WebRule in your HTML by invoking the render method. Now we are done with our markup, so let's code the controller. As with typical controllers, you need to have the index action in which we initialize our rule model. In this particular demo, we pass it to the view using the viewbag object. Although not part of the web rule engine, the demo project also provides a web form that lets us test the rule that is currently displayed. This demo declares this form in the patient form shared view. I'll show you how you can use this form to test your rules in the next video that is linked in the description of this one. Now let's run the application to see if the integration worked. As you can see, the web rule control has been successfully added to our MVC web page. Thanks for watching this short demo, and thank you for your interest in web rule business rules engine. For details, please visit our website at rule.codeeffects.com. All links and additional info can be found in the description of this video.